Hi there, this is Professor Juris, and I wanted to make you a quick video um, and show you some information about hand coloring um, alternative process prints. Now these methods will also apply to fiber base and RC prints, um, but you'll have to have the addition of a fixative spray and a photo fixative spray somewhat like this Marshall's Priest Color Spray. Now there there are fixative sprays um, that are available at art supply stores, but a lot of them are more for coating, um, like a charcoal drawing after you've done the drawing itself. So um, those don't tend to work well for you know coloring photographs. You need to get a, a fixative spray that's actually made for photographs, and they're getting harder and harder to find. Um, you can look in B and H, and then there was actually a company up in Michigan. Um, if you just search Google photo fixative sprays, you could probably find some that are available. Um, but again, they are harder to get because um, a lot of places just stop making them and stop coloring them. McDonald was another brand name and um, I don't think they make it anymore, but um, it was a good fixative spray and they had a number of different coatings. Um, I was on Google last night and I saw that company up in Michigan and they still make sprays. So you can get these and they, they run about $10 a can. Um, this is Marshall's, which made Marshall's photo oils, and again, I don't even know if they're still available, but this is what you would put on the spread on a print, like a fiber-based print or an RC print, if you wanted to do the methods that, um, that I'm going to show you in this book. And um, I'd like to give credit where credit is due, and one of the, back in like the early 80s, um, 1981, 82, when I was getting started in this, and I started hand coloring, and started um, altering photographs. Uh, one of the books that I, I purchased was this book right here uh, by B. Nettles. And um, this book was called Breaking the Rules. And I looked and I just Googled it and it came up on Amazon so you could still get it. Um, you can get a spiral bound book for like 373. Um, but I like the title of it, Breaking the Rules, because what that implies is, is with these photographs, you can kind of, um, make up your own methods as you go along and one of the methods I'm going to show you I totally made up I haven't found it in any book and I actually haven't even found any videos where people are teaching this but um, it's a method that I used in my portrait studio when I had it back in Youngstown and um, it would also be a good um, a good thing to maybe do if you wanted to start a photo studio I have some old photographs of myself that my mother had um, taken when I was like before I was like in first grade. So these, these portraits, and they were actually done by an artist in Youngstown that made fiber-based black and white prints and then hand colored them. And I believe those those were colored with photo oils, but the, the methods that I'm gonna show you um, involve using pastel, oil pastels, um, and colored pencils and watercolor pigment, and then um, peerless watercolor paints, which is actually made for photos. and. Um, you'll have to look and see, um, do your own investigation to see if some of these things are still available. Um, I believe the Peerless watercolors are still available through like B&H Photo. Um, this is a good source for them, but um, I'll show you those and you can, um, you know, search those. But these are really nice for, um, ooh, hand coloring um, black and white prints and, and they work really good on um, these uh, alternative process prints too. So to start with, what I'm gonna do is um, clean my brush off because I see my brush just rolled into the paint. Um, so get that cleaned off. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I think in this print right here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna put some color in this sky up here. So what I'm gonna do is I will get my pastels out. And this is where it's really important, especially if you're making archival prints, is to get good quality um, products. You could go to you know some big box store. I'm not going to mention any names, but and buy the the ones they have for like three dollars or something. And the problem with them is is the, you know they're using poor components, poor ingredients when they make them, and they don't last long. So if you want to spend all this time hand coloring a print and then find that it fades out, um, you know then that's your loss because you didn't want to spend the original money to um, to make the print. So I think I'm going to go with a. Um, this, this color right here, um, this nice green color. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna peel back the thing on this chalk a little bit first, I think, or this pastel. 
so I can get to it a little bit easier. And then um, what you're gonna do is either use a razor blade or use your knife. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. And what I'll do is go to the, the print area right here and I'm gonna scrape off a little bit of chalk on there. And I like to make sure that you, you see this, what I'm doing here. Um, because a lot of people, when I recommended using oil pastels, and again, if we go to, to B. Nettle's book, Breaking the Rules, there is no really right or wrong. You could just color, you know, color in the print if you wanted to do that. But what I like to do is put a little chalk down there, and then I will get a Q-tip or a piece of cotton, and I'm simply going to rub this into there. And then, you know, once I get this where I want it, um, I'll kind of blend it around. And this, this takes time. I mean, a photograph like this, I might spend two hours, you know, hand coloring. So it does take time. And I'm not going to spend two hours in this video hand coloring this particular image. But I just wanted to show you, um, you know, how the chalk method is done. And then what you could do is once you're done, you can take this outside and blow it off. And then they make um, gray kneading erasers. And a gray kneading eraser basically absorbs anything that, that you rub it on. So say that I, I got some area down, some, some of the sky area down here in the print. I could take a kneading eraser and gently rub this and actually clean that area off. So it's important that you, um, you know, clean that off and get it exactly where you want it. And then I could move on to um, another method, which would be like these um, Marshall's Photo Oil Pencils. And, you know, these are really nice too. They, they work really well on, um, on your alternative process prints. But again, if you wanted to do this on like a fiber-based print or an RC print, you can't really color on them with pencils unless you put Photo Fixative Spray on it. So by putting Photo Fixative Spray down on top of it, um, you can actually, you know, then color it. And then Marshall's actually made another um, solution, this um, photo fixative solution that'll come with your kit. Um, this is a kit of photo oil pencils that I actually bought from Marshall's, but you could put this um, PM, <coughs> excuse me, PM solution over a, an RC or fiber-based print, and then you could um, color over it once it dries. It's, it does somewhat the same thing as the sprays do. It, um, you know, leaves a tooth on the paper. But what I could do now is I could, you know, get this, um, get these pencils and I could, I'm going to turn this print a little bit right here. And I could start to color in some of the areas that I want. And this is kind of brown already. So maybe I'll come over here and where it's um, like this and kind of, you know, run this pencil over here to kind of color this in, make this brown. And then again, I could use a Q-tip to blend it together. Just like that. And get it where I want it. And then again, I would use a kneading eraser to, um, to clean up where I, if I got the color someplace where I didn't want to have the color. And these, these pencils come in a lot of different um, kits and so forth. But you see, they I wanted to show you these. They... They are um, actually photographic pencils or drawing pencils. This is an art artist set, but they're made for um, you know coloring on coloring on photographs or um, doing drawings and stuff. You could use Prismacolor pencils too. the The problem I don't I don't like Prismacolor pencils is because Prismacolor pencils are made more for um, just drawing on you know hard paper and stuff. And though they will work actually on the alternative process, but they won't work for using. Um, like silver prints or you know RC prints or fiber-based prints, they're hard to work with. Where the Marshalls photo oil pencils um, are much softer and the, the color goes on much easier. So now what I'm going to do is um, actually show you some watercolor paint. And what I did is I took my uh, tubes of watercolor, that same watercolors that I would use for um, gum printing, uh, like Winsor Newton. Um, and what I do is put a little dab in this watercolor tray right here. And I, I take some water and I'll put a little bit of water on here. Um, and then I'm going to pull a little bit of um, watercolor pigment from the little puddle here that I already mixed a little water with and kind of dry this out. And now what I can do is come in here 
and I can actually take and dab this on some of the the bushes right here and, and make these bushes in a, in a black and white print appear to be green if I wanted to do that. And it's just a question of kind of what you want to do and how much time. You know, I'm just doing this quickly for the video, but I actually even have a, um, a large magnifying glass that mounts to the table that I could put over top of this so I could get in and do intricate detail. Now, you do notice that I'm using these um, fine retouching brushes, which are, um, you know, made for painting photographs and so forth. And um, you could use a bigger brush, like a, like a hake brush, or just get some watercolor brushes. It depends on how much area you're doing. Like, if I was going to just do this whole area down here, I could use, like, a hake brush um, and mix up the, the watercolor paint. And when I mix up the watercolor paint, what I could do is, you know, actually just you know, kind of blend it in right here. And, you know, I have a piece of paper over here, if you could see it over there in the green, where I was, you know, playing with a little bit of the green, with the green color, um, so that I could kind of see, like, what the watercolor do. So it's it's a good idea to start on a piece of regular paper. Just get a, a piece of um, watercolor paper, Arches or Reeves BFK, and, and start to, you know, play with it a little bit there before you actually do it on your photograph. Because once you put it on your photograph, you're pretty much stuck. I don't even think you could put it back in the wash and, um, you know, clean it up with the watercolor pigments. So let's look at the, um, the Peerless watercolor paints right now that are actually made for photographs. And these are really amazing because if you take regular watercolor pigment and if you try to put that on a, a fiber-based print, or an RC print, one of the things that you're going to find is that they will just um, kind of ball up or make little droplets of, of watercolor paint. So they'll, they'll set on the surface and they really don't want to absorb. Now, if you put the PM solution from Marshalls or use the fixative, they'll absorb a little bit, but watercolor pigment doesn't really work good on, on regular photographs. Just plain watercolor paint like you would, um, again, be using for your um, gum bichromate printing. So those, these kind of paints work, you know, again, great for gum printing, but they, they don't seem to work good on regular photographs. But on your alternative process prints that are actually made on a, a sheet of photograph or a sheet of paper, um, like the ham and meal paper um, or the bird, burger um, platinum paper, Crane's Crest, all those work, um, it'll work pretty good on. So what, what, these, what these do right here, um, these peerless watercolor paints, the way they work, it's really simple and it's pretty cool. Is you'll just take a, a clean brush and um, I have some water right here and I'm just going to dip this in water. And what I'm going to do is just touch this paper. And when I, well, that one wasn't clean. Um, so when I touch this paper, what happens is I will pick up the orange right here. And then I can come in here and paint that color onto here. So you, you're simply just wetting the brush and then touching the paper, and then you could paint it in. And this, if I was doing that space right there, I might want to get a little bit bigger brush. But you see, it's kind of cool, and you could paint that in there. Let's put another little color in there, too. Let's go see what kind of colors we have here. There's some black right there. Let's try this green. This green looks nice. So I'm going to try to get this brush cleaned off a little bit. And I'm just going to touch this. And then I'm going to come over here. Let me put it on here so you can see it. And I can even take a little bit of water then and bring it back into here just like I would regular watercolor pigment. And do that so these are all the methods that um, I use um, all the time and again hopefully you know some of these methods will um, work good for you when you're hand coloring if you um, you know want to try to put some color on some of your um, photographs so hope that helps if you um, like the video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel and um, go out there take some pictures make some prints and hand color them Thank you.